Number seven, write the electron configuration for each of the following ions. And then they give me A through L. Wow. <laughs> All right, so this one is going to be crazy. Now, uh, the first things first is instead of you watching, you know, like a 30 minute video, hopefully it's not 30 minutes, but they don't tell me to write the full electron configuration. So I'm going to be doing the shorthand. Now, you guys should know how to do electron configurations. It was basically, I want to say, maybe one-third of Chapter 3. So if, if you guys are stuck with electron configuration, all you got to do is just go back to Chapter 3 and find those questions. I have all those videos for you in the Chapter 3 playlist, and you can kind of pick it up from there. But as of right now, we're just going to do the shorthand for all of these ions. Now, how do we write electron configuration for ions? Two things. One, you always pretend like there's no charge. So you're just going to write electron configuration for atom as if the charge never existed. And then once you have that answer, then you will adjust for charge. All right. And just know that whenever you see a negative charge, right, that always means we gain electrons. And if we see a positive, that always means that we lost electrons. Okay? So, let's get down to business. Now, before we just do that, we should remember that this yellow group is your S orbitals, right? These blue are the Ds. This green is the Ps. And then these two down here are your Fs if we need it. All right, so let's get down to it. So A, they want the electron configuration for AS3 minus. So first I need to write the electron configuration um, without the charge, and then I will adjust. So AS arsenic is over here. Now I'm going to do shorthand. So remember, the shorthand is always stating the noble gas preceding it, before it. So the noble gas, and remember, your noble gas category is here. So that's your noble gas group. Um, your noble gas is argon in this case. So by putting it in parentheses, you're basically stating that you have the same electron configuration up until argon. So up until the 18th electron, and then you continue. Remember, you got to follow the atomic number. So now we move down to 19, and we got to go through every single box to get to number 33. So we're starting here, and that is the 4s. Remember, the s's start with 1, so 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s. The p's start with 2, so this would start your 2p. The d's start with 3, so this first group would be the 3d. And then the F start with 4, so this would be 4F and 5F. So we have 4S, and now I have to pass both two boxes, two electrons, so that's why you put a 2 up top here. And then we're in 3D land, so it's 3D, and you keep moving forward. we got to pass all of these to get to arsenic, right? So that's 3D10, and then I'm at 2P, 3P, this is 4P, right? So that's 4P, and now 1, 2, 3. So that would be 4P3. Now, I did the first part. I wrote the electron configuration as if it wasn't even a charge, and now I will adjust for the charge. This negative 3 tells me that I gained 3 electrons. So instead of a 4P3, remember P's have a max of six electrons, S's have a max of two, D's have a max of 10, and F's have a max of 14 electrons. So three plus three, because I gained three electrons, this would just turn into a six. So I can just erase this and say that it is now 4P6, and that's the answer for A. Whew. Okay. B. Let's see how many we can do, right? B is I minus. 
So write the electron configuration as if it didn't have a charge, and then you adjust. Arsenic is, uh, sorry, iodine is down here. The noble gas before it is krypton, so I'm just going to put krypton in parentheses. And now I pick up from number 36. So that's over here. That's 5s. So it'd be 5s2. This is 4d. I got to go all the way. So that's 4d10. And then I'm now at 5p. So that's 5p. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There you go. Now I adjust for the charge. This one was a negative one, which means that you gain one electron. And P's could have a max of six. It has five right now. I need to gain one. So five plus one is six. And there you go. B's done. C. BE2 plus. So I'm going to just pretend it's beryllium at the moment. Beryllium is this. Right, number four. The noble gas before it is actually helium, right? So, I mean, technically we can write helium. But in this case, I'm going to write the actual um, electron configuration because it's just so small. So in this case, you start from the beginning, which is always hydrogen. So that's 1s2. And then it's 2s, because we're over here, and I pass both boxes, so that's 2s2. Now I adjust for the charge. Plus two means that I lost two electrons. So I always lose it from the largest principal quantum number, and those are the big numbers, right? So between one and two, I will lose it from two. And I lose two electrons, so this would go bye-bye, which means the whole um, subshell would go bye-bye. So I could just erase this, and beryllium two plus would just be 1s2, which is the same thing as helium. So that takes care of that. D, CD2+. Plus. So let's see. Cadmium is right here. Okie dokie. So noble gas before it is krypton, right? Oop, right over here. So I could put that in parentheses. And now I pick up where I left off, which is 5s. So 5s, I have to pass both boxes. So that's 5s2. And now I'm in 4d. And I have to go from here all the way to here. So that's the 10 boxes. So that's 4D10, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep. Okay. And now we just have to do the plus 2. We have to adjust for the charge. Plus 2 means that we have to lose 2 electrons. And you always lose it from the largest principal quantum number. In this case, we have a 5 versus a four. Five is larger, so this whole thing would go bye-bye because I need to lose the two electrons and there they are. So if I just erase this, it would now just be krypton, krypton's electron configuration with just 4d10. So I can just kind of move this over and just say 4d10. And that's the answer for D. E, oxygen two minus. So oxygen's over here. The noble gas before it is helium, but for this one, let's just do the whole configuration because it's, it's quite small. So we always start with hydrogen. That's 1s, so 1s2 because I path both boxes. Then I'm down to here, lithium, which is 2s2 because I have to pass both boxes. And now I'm at the 2p, and I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 2p4. A negative 2 means that I gained 2 electrons. So remember, P has a max of 6. So 4 plus 2 technically is 6. So I can just erase this, and there goes my 6. F. Gallium. G-A-3+. plus. So gallium is right here. So the noble gas before it is argon. So I'll just put argon in parentheses. And now we move to number 19, which is in the 4s. So this would be 4s2. Now we have to pass all of this. That's 3d. So 3d10. And then 4p1, because it's only one box. 
Now I adjust for the charge. It's a three plus, which means that I lose three electrons and you always lose it from the highest principal quantum number. So between a four, three, and a four, you would lose electrons from the N equals four group first. And I had to lose a total of three. So there's one electron in the four P. So that would get canceled. And now I have two remaining. And look here, there's two electrons in the 4s. So bye-bye. So both of those would get erased. And you would be only left with 3d10. So that's the answer for that one. So if I just erase this, because they get canceled, those electrons get removed, it would just be 3d10. Ooh, let me clean that up a little bit. Okay. Halfway there. <laughs> I hope I'm going as fast... I'm trying to go as fast as I possibly can with, you know, you guys understanding. G, L, I, plus. This is a plus one. So that means that it lost one electron and lithium's over here. So this one is pretty close to the top. So I'll just write the full electron configuration. So we start with hydrogen, which is 1s2, and then 2s1 for lithium. But now plus one means that we lost one electron and they lose it from the two, so this whole thing would be gone. So now it's just 1s2, and that would be that one. Let's see, where can I put the extra ones? I guess I could put them over here. So now we have n3 minus. So nitrogen is over here. Oop. It's pretty close to the top, so I'll just do the whole configuration. We always start with hydrogen, so that's 1s2, and now we're over here to 2s2, and then we're at 2p, and I need to collect three boxes to get to nitrogen, so that's 2p3, and now a negative three tells me that I gain three electrons. And remember, the p's have a max of six electrons, so there was three here, I need to gain three, so three plus three is six. So I can just erase this and make this a six. And that one's done. Sn, two plus. Let's see, where is tin? Tin is number 50, tin's down here. The noble gas before it is krypton, so that's Kr. And now I pick up from number 37, which is in the 5s category. So it'd be 5s2, because I have to pass both of these boxes. Then I'm at 4d, right? And I got to pass all these. So that's 4d10. And now I'm at 5p12. 5p2. Now they're telling me that it's a plus 2 charge, which means that I lose two electrons, so I have to subtract, and you always lose from the highest principal quantum number. So between five, four, and five, you will lose from the five, n equals five, and you always lose from the last going in. So you would lose these two electrons first before you touch those two electrons in the S. So you only need to lose two, so that whole 5p orbital has no electrons in it, so I can just erase this. And that would be the answer for that one. J is, and let me just mark these. This one was G. This one was H. Okay. J is cobalt, 2 plus. Cobalt is over here. The noble gas before cobalt is argon. So that's AR in brackets. Then we pick up where argon left off, which is Number 19, that's 4s, so this is 4s2, and now we were in 3d, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yep, and there's that one, and now it's telling us that it's a plus 2, which means that we lose, whoop, we lose 2 electrons, so we always lose it from the highest n number, so between a 4s and a 3d, we would lose the 2 from the 4s. So we need to lose 2, there's 2 here, so that whole thing cancels. So if I just erase this, what you have left is just 3d7. 
So I can just say 3D7, and that's cobalt. K is Fe2+. So Fe is over here. Noble gas before it is argon, so AR. And now we're basically where we were with cobalt, right? We're in 4S, so 4S2. And then we're at 3D, because we're over here, we have to go all the way to iron. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's 3D6. They're telling me that it's a plus 2 charge, so that means that we lost 2 electrons. And between the 4 and the 3, we would take the electrons from n equals 4. So the 2 electrons here would just get lost. And now if I just erase that, we're down to just 3d6. And that would be the electron configuration for that. And then last one, As, arsenic. I will put that one over here. As, and this is a 3+. plus. Arsenic is... Oh, over here, now they're saying that in this case, they want a plus three instead of this one being a minus three. So still, I will take the noble gas before it, which is argon. So AR. And then pick it up from there. So now you're at 4S, number 19. So that's 4S2, 3D. 10, because I have to pass all of this, so 3D10, and then it is 4P1, 2, 3, so 4P3. Now the plus 3 is signifying that I need to lose 3 electrons, and you always lose from the, the highest end number, so between a 4, 3, and a 4, you would lose from the 4s, However, you always lose from the outside inward. So you would lose electrons from the 4P as opposed to the 4S. So you need to lose three. Here's three electrons here. So this whole thing will cancel out. So I can just basically erase that. And now you're just left with ar um, argon in brackets, 4S2 and 3D10. And that's the answer for that one. Woo. Guys, we did it. I thought it would take much longer, but I'm glad we did the shorthand version. So once again, if you guys are not too strong with your electron configuration, go back to chapter three. There's tons of questions with me just doing electron configuration, and I'm sure you will get them with those because I go at a much slower pace. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for staying to the end. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for the support. If you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button to make the channel grow, to get out to all the students all over the world who may need this service. Thank you for that. Let's keep working hard. Let's study hard. I'll see you guys all in number eight. Have an awesome day.